episode three. Yes, guys. We back, baby. From the Throne Podcast. We Everybody back. was asking when we were going to come back. Uh-huh. And I'm and like, it, the snow. <laughs> Dude, we got snowmobiles. Yeah, we got snow no. in, baby. We couldn't we come You got to take that in consideration, yeah, right? Yeah, we couldn't come outside. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, we got a special guest here. So Donna, bro, you so what's so up, yeah, King? Yeah, yeah. Our, our first guest. Our first, our first, first guest. guest. Right. Oh, my gosh. This is really exciting, man. You know yeah, what I mean? I'm proud of you guys. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, we're gonna get into all his life story and all his contributes um, to the disability disability community um, later on in the show. But yeah, he's gonna start us, you know, drinking with us, enjoying the vibe. We, you know, we met this brother like a long, long time ago. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's re- we're really excited to have him on this episode. Um, we're gonna learn a lot and all his, like I said, all his contribution to uh, the disability community. So it's gonna be a a little fun, fun, fun ride, right? Yeah. What's up, Black History Month? Yes. Right. Uh huh. What kind of forever? <laughs> what kind of forever? <laughs> Let's get it. Black History, how y'all right. feeling? This, I feel this great, Black History bro. Month, I feel amazing. Yeah, I feel, I feel like great. things are gonna come into fruition for mm-hmm. all of us and right. every colored person. <laughs> I'm feeling really good this Black History Month. I, you know, when I was younger, um, all we did was learn about like Martin Luther King, and I'm like, listen, Martin Luther King was a great, great man. Yeah, let me, was. let me, let me not like, like you, know, anything, yeah. you know, take his 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 glory, mm-hmm. but. You know, it would have been good to learn about, like, the Black Wall Street, you know what I mean, oh, in 19, 1920, you know what I mean? Like, the first big establishment with mm-hmm. a lot of black, you know, professionals and entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Like, it would have been great to learn about stuff like that. Or Basically, the black to Panthers. learn about more than black just Panthers. the struggle yeah. of the black person. Yeah. You want right. to learn about mm-hmm. actual good things right. that happened. It yeah. was so many successful black entrepreneurs yeah. start, right. dating back from the 1800s. Adam C.J. Walker. All they focused mm-hmm. us on was mm-hmm. slavery. Right. <laughs> it's like, you mm-hmm. go to school to learn about slavery. And then now they have the choice to opt out of learning about Black History Month, which is crazy. Right, right. right. And they love Martin Luther King because he preached about peace. Everything was just non-violent, yeah, non-violent. Yeah. Non-violent, non-violent. <laughs> Damn Coretta. <laughs> but but in, in, like, let's think about it, right? In reality, uh-huh. a majority of African Americans are not going to be marching down the street. No. Mm. You know? So I, how do we make it? Like, if, if we would have been, to, if I was told uh, in, in shop class that the wrench I'm using on this lawnmower engine, right, mm. was made by a black man, Jack Johnson. Mm. You feel me? Mm. Out of me, my perception would have been, been a little different. different. That's a fact. You That's know? a fact. So, yeah. It's a lot of history that wasn't taught. So it's like, oh, yeah, you know, sure. Martin Luther King is so much preached in, like, you know, in public schools and through, like, you know, uh, K through 12. But it's like, you know, I would love to learn about, uh, like, Garrick Morgan. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He created, like, mm-hmm. with the traffic light. And he has something to do with the gas mask. So little small things I wish, you know, was taught. And I think we as parents and, you know, adults got to teach our kids um, more about, like, black history. You know what I mean? Because right. the, the, obviously the public schools is not going to teach them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Shout out to Black History Month, you know what I mean? Even though we need a whole year. Yeah, Chris. It's it's a life. What Bobby and Whitney said, they said we need every other year to be Black History Year. They only gave us 28 days. The shortest shortest month month at that. So, you know, we take the whole year. We special people, man. And, um, you know, we just wanted to shout out Black History Month. Um, And this is a special edition, you know what I mean? Um, We're going to have a black guest for this month because of Black History Month and um, celebrate, you know, our kings and queens and... um, um, you know that that's how we look at each other in the city society. We all kings and queens at the end of the day, right? That's right. Fight the power. So you know, I have a question for you guys. Since it is Black History Month, right? Um, anybody could spark this off. How does it feel with being a black parent with mm. a disability, um, mm. and overcoming all the things in society, right? And still having that stigma, of just you know, being black and just um, just going through society, being a black disabled parent. Mm-hmm. How does it feel? Um, and what is the steps that you he take started, to, you know, so to be, goes. you know, successful in that? Mm. Me, my approach is more like 
being a uh, you know a black father and disabled, mm-hmm. I just wanted to show that you know in all that you can still be you know a strong pillar like and and actually hold you know, be held accountable and hold like you know your wife and the kids down you know because they in the society the way that if you watch how they depict us on television like right like say if it's a if it's a male figure in the house and he has a disability they try to make it as if they have to take care of him like you know. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, and that's not the case with me. Like, you know, don't get me wrong. I don't need any much more help than my woman would need when she has her menstrual or a period or something. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't. So, like, I can still be. Starting to hit a little bit. Huh? I can still be. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking and driving. <laughs> You're going to learn something about this show. I'm always pouring. <laughs> like, nothing. That's a fact. Pour up mommy. You cannot <laughs> announce it every time. So, yeah. We'll be talking about the whole show. So, yeah, you can still, you can still, you know, be shown a light of strength, you know, and, and, and still be respectable and, you know, have, and, and be equally yoked and, you know, show that your, um, so that your woman, your wife or significant other that you, um, that you're not, just that you just that you're not dependent upon them, you know, and right. um, and that the kids and you could still be, they could still look to you as a like I said a strong pillar, and you could you know, it's not, not in a sense where like you you need help like I said or anything. So you know, that's the way I look at it. And you, you can know, still be the my, lead. You can still be the lead. You can still exactly. You can still be a man of respect. You can still lead the family and be a strong role model, mm-hmm. and the family as opposed to just being helped all the time or you know what I'm saying like oh we're just gonna give. Dad his medication and lay him down and, no. and nah, it's, that's not the case. Still the like, provider. You know, still, a, I'm still the provider for my family. You know, okay. Even though my kids' mom and I we're not together or whatever, but my kids they respect me. Their friends respect me. You know, mm-hmm. it's not I'm not the guy that's just laying in bed that you're taking care of because I or pushing me around just because I'm in a wheelchair and I right. have a disability. You get what I'm saying? So I'm still that that man that you know mm-hmm. that they respect and um admire. So yeah, that's my right. thing. Yeah, okay. like I, and I they touch on that piggyback. He's right. Like all right, so. This actually happened uh, Saturday, this past Saturday, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I took my little guy to the barbershop with me. Okay. First time, right? First trip. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're leaving, and it hit me as we're about to get in the cab because I have him on my lap. And uh, it's a, there's a red light, so there's cars here. So it, I just felt like an eye beaming on yeah, me. Yeah, I yeah. felt it, right? So I look at the driver, and, of course, he's a man of color, and he was like, hmm. And I'm like, mm. what? What? <laughs> right, right, right. You do what you're supposed to right. do. You know, yeah. you understand, right? I'm, I'm a father, but I, I have to see it. I realize that there's a stigma and expectation that sit on you as a number oh, one as gosh. a black man, and then the disability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so like they, they, they're surprised. It's a shocking thing to see. Like, oh, wow, the dynamic both. Cool, but yeah. also, you gotta understand the odds are against you being a black yeah, man. True. Period. So now, imagine putting given a disability. You get what I'm saying? Oh, Added sure. disability to that. So sure. I could see why society... It could society. be aberration. It mm-hmm. could be aberration, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it, it's expected. I'm sorry. For mm-hmm. me, it's expected to be responsible. That's right. You know, that, I was raised around that. I and that's a man around, thing. That's right. a moral thing right. before anything. You know right. what I'm that's normal. Exactly. And okay. to me, that's the main thing. If Not to cut you off. That's the thing. I feel like... It's all about what you teach your kids. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like I like I'm raising my kids on you know having morals, principles, have integrity, be kind. You get what I'm saying? Like things like that. That's what I I feel like. That's what you you know. That's the foundation. That right. It's not really much, so much. I mean, much so you having a disability or whatever. So you know, that's my thing. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> is the, the liquor hitting you? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I had a guy too. Um, I had a guy. He hit me up. Uh, a, few, a while ago, he was saying like he had a you know he's a disab- he's disabled in a wheelchair and um mm-hmm. he said uh, his sons he said he don't know how to be a father to his sons anymore that was like so sad to me mm. man. and I, I feel like it's more so you know you just in your head too much man long as like they they little boys they kids like at the end of the day they don't know you know what the standard is or whatever they still respect you and they love you and it's right, what right. you put out into the world you know it's the image that you're putting in, you know they like i said they can still respect you it's just what you bring what's how you what, see yourself it's how you see yourself yeah if you yeah, feel like if you feel weak they ain't gonna see you as that you understand right. what i'm saying so that's that's probably what about why you, queen? that's probably why people shouldn't have kids whether you have a disability whether what skin color you are you shouldn't have a kid until you're ready to mm-hmm. love who you are yourself because mm-hmm. at the end of the day your kids are a reflection of you mm-hmm. so if you don't love yourself how can you love your child mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. when you like i said last the last ep- well the first episode this is a rebirth so you might not love who you are now. You might have loved who you were before, so it was easy for you to love your kids. So now it's like you're learning how to be a parent all over again in a chair, you know, or in whatever disability that you gained. 
Mm-hmm. See, I had my son in the chair, so I knew what was going to happen when I carried him. I had an easy pregnancy. It wasn't hard or anything. It was just, you know, I had to, after a while, I couldn't push myself as much as I used to. I used to lose my breath fast enough. And then <clears throat> it came to the point where now my son is running and he's, everybody was like, oh, you know, some trolls on the internet, like, oh, her kid is walking before her. I know she's so upset. And I'm just like, why would I ever be mad? <laughs> you know what I'm, this is the shit that you hear, though. But it's like, why would I ever be mad? I'm so happy wow. that my son can do this. You know what I mean? If I don't, if I have to sit in this chair for the rest of my life just so that my son could run, my grandkids could jump, you understand what I'm saying? I'll mm-hmm. sit and I'll take it humbly. Mm-hmm. So being mm-hmm. a black parent with a disability, mm-hmm. it's twice as hard because you you don't want people to take advantage of your child like they try to take advantage of you because all they try to do in america is take advantage of black people and then right after black people all they try to do is take a take advantage of disabled people Mm -hmm. i don't get a check from my son Mm -hmm. so the check that i've been getting for myself this whole time is what has to stretch between me and my son you know what i mean and whatever else i do on the side that comes to that i don't do nothing else on the side so (laughs) uh, but it's just it's fearful because i want to be able to protect him Mm -hmm. you know i want to be able to go up to school somebody beat him i want to you up, my yeah, son, yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna yeah. do that. Mm-hmm. Whether how it doesn't matter if I get thrown out the chair, I'm gonna get it done. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get the job done. You understand? Because it's my kid. I, and I when can help you when you when you have a kid, though, <laughs> it's like all you care about is that kid. Like you could be outside, and I'm thinking about doing. Well, what is my son having for lunch right now? You know what I mean? Right. Like, is he okay? Did he fall? Like, so that's just like a. It's a very sensitive topic. Being a parent, period, is hard. It's so right. then you add on being black, it's harder, and then you add on being disabled. It's even harder yeah. but at the end of the day we still get the job done and we're Facts. we all raising beautiful children Facts. they're Hello. very strong very smart that's and right. definitely talented so that's all that's important there okay. i don't feel like putting anything on you is gonna make Just it, make it easier, clap. better right. <laughs> <laughs> what you guys think is the expectations for disabled parents um that we're gonna th- fail that uh-huh. that our kids won't respect us that our kids have to take care of us mm-hmm. the same yeah. way to look at us in relationships yeah. mm-hmm. even more than that i can give you a situation that happened to a friend of mine right this is this is actually how we uh, got started with our nonprofit and stuff like that right mm-hmm. so uh one day she called me really irate and said that uh so her child was um was going on a school trip mm-hmm. and she got picked as a chaperone but she's in a uh, a wheelchair okay, okay. Uh, uh um a motorized chair mm-hmm. so um the bus doesn't have the ADA accommodations mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is Another issue, okay? Right. So a huge said, issue. Mm-hmm. Then your child can't go if you can't be there. And they're like, all right, so if I do wow. go, how do I get there? You guys have no form of transportation, no way to logistically to get me there. You understand? And she have to come out of her pocket. Being that she, and she already paid for the trip, mind you, for us kids. Right. Kid, she kid. pays for her child's education every mm-hmm. month. It's, it's a, there's a fee. So that child deserves everything that every other child gets. And just because of her disability, they were going to deny her child that trip and that education. It's mm-hmm. like other kids. So, and, and that has nothing to do with the kids. So that, we were like, you know, uh, whoa, we have to change the whole dynamic, not yeah. just in home and how society sees us, but um, systematically in mm-hmm. school. Oh, sure. Like, you may not be in school, but your child can be affected by your disability. That's right. Because you're just, you know, so... Yeah. That's another thing. I, I, the way my son is being that he, I had him when I was in the chair. Like he doesn't even notice that people shouldn't be in chairs or not. And that's the thing I love about kids. Cause even all of them, right? I have so many little cousins and stuff, and like just my friends have kids, and I tell them I'm a mermaid. They're like, "What happened to you? <laughs> oh, I'm a mermaid. That's why I can't walk, but I can swim really good. You understand what I'm saying? They never see me in water because I can't swim neither. But to kids, their imagination is everything, and I don't take that away from them. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna sit there and say, "Well, I got shot. That's why." Yeah. Some hood yeah. kids, you do have to take get there with because they'll they keep know. messing with you like no yeah. no no then i was like i got shot See, and it was like whatever it's like society cripples cripples children and the way they think right it's like even like racism right racism is taught you could put two different type of children in the same room black or white they don't know if that person, mm-hmm. um, the reason where he lives or if he lives in poverty or that, that white kid lives in suburb. All they know, they just want to play and have fun. So it's the same thing. Exactly. I think with a disability, like if you teach your children at a young age how to teach other kids with a disability, right? Mm-hmm. And I think they need to have the, this in school, uh, disability edit classes or something like mm-hmm. that. Because it's, majority, it's like over a billion people with disabilities living in the world. And is, there's no classes taught on... They you have to stop separating kids with special education. And I agree mm-hmm. with that. Because 
because if you yeah. do not have somebody, because they take a per, a kid can be just in a wheelchair. Nothing can be wrong with them mentally. You understand? And then they won't put them in the class, even if a kid does have a mental disability. Mm -hmm. Put the power in the room with that child and let them get the same education. I agree. Because at the end of the day, we're that's when we, that's what we start the discrimination. Because mm -hmm. then you start saying, oh, special ed. Everybody knew that back in the day, like special ed. And then kids started going in just because of their behavior. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you still in special ed? You retarded? You know what I mean? Just ignorant stuff because we're so young and we don't understand. But they created that divide for us. Mm -hmm. Now if we incorporated everybody in the same classes just with some of us get a little bit more extra help then it would be natural for people to be helpful and maybe the kids will start to help the other kids that need more help oh maybe i can push your wheelchair maybe i can help you carry your walker maybe i can do this no. that's what kids will do if they were allowed to be around each other right. but instead they separate them so so you're saying mm -hmm. separatism starts with the, the, the responsible adults, the people that they yeah. Oh, of course, for sure. Right, they want to make sure. their job easier because who wants to put kids with disabilities and special needs in the same classes as kids that don't need it because then it's like, oh, then I'm going to have to deal with this and this one might be screaming while this one is sitting down. But bad kids going to scream regardless. Right. And it's regular kids, that's bad kids regardless. Kids. But they're not actually kids. thinking about the effect on both parties, mm -hmm. the disabled mm -hmm. kids and the kids that are not disabled. Mm -hmm. get, their perception is affected now because you taught them that they're different. Just like when you exactly. have black and white schools. Just like when That's you have taught. white white mm -hmm. schools and then it's like, well, I, I went to a white school and I remember this girl told me, well, your parents work at McDonald's. And it's like, well, my parents don't do that. But I almost got suspended because I almost beat the crap out of her for saying that. You understand? Mm -hmm. And this was like when I was walking. So it's like, how dare you tell me my but parents listen, work at McDonald's? But listen, that's what I'm saying is being taught. Like, it's what she sees, you see what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's a stigma, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a stereotype. She doesn't know that, but she, in her mind, whatever she sees on TV or whatever she thinks about black people, that's that's what, you know, she was taught. And same thing, I think, like, even with a disability, it's like, if you're taught this person is supposed to be way different as a child, that's, right. that's what your mind, that's just your perception of a person mm -hmm. with a disability. Yeah, you know? as soon right. as a little kid sees you, they're just... Yeah. For real. Yeah. I teach my kids that I, I feel like not, I don't have to teach them like they have more compassion and empathy just for the simple fact that I'm in the chair you know what I'm saying and they even stop people when they're out sometimes if, if people I'm the guest sometimes if, if <laughs> sometimes like if people are you know if they see people out and you know if they see some a, a disabled person struggling or something you know they'll stop and ask like you know because their father is in a wheelchair you know what I'm saying so I think, I think it's yeah I think I think it's all about what you teach them and how you lead i like to like i said I, I, you can still lead with a disability a as a parent and me i show i lead by example mm -hmm. everything i do you know what i'm saying like i don't have i don't really speak much but they see me they see how i'm strong i'm confident you get right, what i'm saying right. i don't you know i don't um waver from like you know anything like any opportunities or anything that like if something occurs something happens or whatever i don't like run from it you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. like you know i face it head on and they 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 learn like okay my dad is strong so i have to be you get what i'm saying like, and like yeah. i said it's important to have a way when you do have a child with it, especially with the disability whether you're black white hispanic whatever you are it's important to have a way whether your home health aid is going to be there 24 7 helping you raise your child or whether it's going to be you by yourself in that apartment with a toddler and you have to figure it out whether your parents are going to help you. It's always a way to get it done, but you have to want it. If you do right. not want a child, do not have one. Too many people want to have a child because their significant other has a child or because they feel like that's just what you're supposed to do, have a child because this is what life is about, having mm -hmm. children. Not everybody is supposed to have children. Mm -hmm. And just because you can make one doesn't mean you're worthy of one because children are beautiful gifts. And if you don't mm -hmm. treat them like that, then they'll turn ugly. Mm -hmm. And it's not about ugly as a parent. It's just ugly on the inside. They won't know how to treat people. They won't know how to rationalize with situations that can be so simply handled. Correct. And then they'll turn into the people that become racist or become exactly. sexist or become ableist. They'll turn into those people if you do not teach them the right way. So well, have kids when they're ready. Teaching, what if that's their right way? And, and if that's, that's their, and if that's their right way, that's why the world is the way the that world it is. Exactly, it is. and it, it takes a village, man, to raise a yeah, child. That's right. So, you know. That's right. So if yeah. like, there's people out there that you know don't have a disability and they're teaching their kids how to be racist, mm. yeah. or how to, or they like they when their kid disrespects someone, they don't check them. So you get them. So saying? they go like, outside so, and get their right, and eat. it's just even you know get their ass so, kicked. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> So what's up, King? Um, we'll be drinking today. I don't know. Bartender, can you please pull me up? Pull me up. <laughs> pull, up pull me up. Pull me <laughs> up. We'll be drinking. We'll be drinking today. Let's tell the audience uh, and our family. Okay. You know what I mean? We'll be we, um, we drinking today. To the wine Cabernet. connoisseurs out there. This is the. <laughs> this is line thirty nine. This mm. is the Cabernet. This is a. Uh, we had red the first time uh -huh. on the first show, and then we had um, white wine the second. <laughs> <laughs> Frenchie's on me because this one is not that you know like I said the other two they were like really like first time friendly like if you you yeah. know like if you're not really into liquor like that then 
those other the other two they were like really sweet. This one is like it's really bitter. Like it's, mm, and you can taste the alcohol. It's like it's wine water. <laughs> it's like yeah, it's an acquired taste. It's definitely. an acquired yeah. It's the one you're supposed to eat with cheeses and stuff. Yeah, right. yeah like, I, that's I, the, I feel like I should have a steak or something. Right facts. Now. <laughs> facts. The one that they this is what they pour on the pastas and stuff. Yeah. And you can just eat it Eggs, with the no, steaks. No, exactly. That's what it is. So you know, well, this, you, this you know me, my little. Yeah, Freak, so you know, right. somebody put me on it's to that. Right. One I'm a little, drink. One of my little joys put me on to that. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know where I'm at now? I, I don't do a lot of like like sweet drinks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, this this is okay for me. Uh, oh, you don't like the fruity drinks? I don't. Yeah, I, I stopped doing all. You like the hard? It hit you in the soul. No, no, no. What the handy? What the handy? So stuff like that. Yeah. So I really. So my taste buds now is 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 accustomed to uh, kind of um, how should I say not bland but tart flavors and things mm. like that. Now, and I like it. I Man, but I'm going to drink it because I'm, I'm an alcoholic. On camera, she pours Snapple. That's all Snapple. I'm <laughs> Fake alcoholic, right? <laughs> they try to take me to rehab. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. My wills won't even allow me to roll to rehab. Oh, my Man. God. They'll lock up. Right. So what's up, sis? This is this is French facts. I want to know what's French Ooh. thoughts. What's this, this Frenchy facts? What's, what's, your mind what's on your mind this week? What's been going through your mm-hmm. mind? What you want to tell the audience? What you want to tell the family what's been on your mind well the french facts of the week are this i want self-love to come back into style Mm -hmm. because so many people are trying to change themselves based it based on just like the trends that's going on based off of like what they see on tv what famous people have everybody Mm -hmm. is getting their face done and it's scaring me now because it's like everybody has the same teeth in their mouth. Everybody doesn't like their teeth anymore. Nobody wants to get braces and does it naturally. way. They go and buy some teeth. Off of, they, they go buy the teeth in DR, Columbia, veneers. wherever they get the teeth from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the veneers. Mm-hmm. And then it just everybody has the same big teeth, big mouth, looking like Takashi 6'9". And then... Big bodies. I'm sorry. Then it's the girls that just... Everybody wants their boobs to just be like up here and then their butt to be out here. It's looking like... like an ant. It's like... <laughs> bro, I swear, bro. It's Coke like, bottle. Where where is Man. the natural love at anymore? Like it's Self-love. like you have to you have to have that to to be done for what? Because they say it's for them, they're doing it for themselves. But then it's like you do it for the Self-love. attention of men, and then it's like these men don't care because they're still somebody with no butt, no boobs. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? They don't care. They're looking at guys are gonna have sex with whatever. You understand what I'm saying? When that, when that line thirty nine starts, yeah. So so ima- <laughs> shout out to this. <laughs> <laughs> so imagine you go spend ten thousand dollars on your body when this. Fucking this ugly girl for like forty dollars in the back, <laughs> and then you're just like, Self-love. wow. Why, you, know, you know what? That's a crazy perception. I never thought about it like that. Seriously, I can really like mess with some, uh, somebody while some, you're like while you're in whatever back. country you're in, getting your body done. Your man is at home cheating on you <laughs> with yeah. somebody that doesn't even have any of that. You know, you bring this. That's crazy. I just had this conversation with a with a friend of mine, this girl, and I'm like, I I changed my mind on that. I'm gonna tell you why, right? Because mm-hmm. at a long, a long time when I'm like, when I'm when I was seeing everybody, all the females getting their body done up, and I'm like, yo, why is this all about <laughs> self love? You should, you mm-hmm. know, love yourself, like love the body God gave you. But if a female want to enhance their look, right, mm-hmm. and if they if that helps them with their self confidence, mm-hmm. why not get it? And remember, for a long time, I used to be like, yo, I'm against that. But I'm like, yo, people really want to feel comfortable with their self. And in the pressures I'm of the not, society, but that's the thing. It's, it's a lot of pressures I'm these not, days. I'm you know not I mean? against it. Okay. I'm just saying it's becoming to the point that I'm scared to have a daughter because she might feel like she has to change herself. See, but that's you know what I'm saying? Why does she feel like she But that's what I'm saying. Why do, why do any these... But these girls are doing it because they, they might have got... Che- there's, there's so many girls it's doing it for the media, wrong reasons. Think, it's it's media. girls oh, doing sure. it because they see, Instagram. oh, this girl's up there looking like TikTok. this. People die because of this. This is not a game. Mm-hmm. You, if your body was meant to be that that's way, right. then you would be born that way. There's girls born with natural sh- snapped mm-hmm. figures. You understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying? They don't have to pay for anything. They have a big bust, big butt, and they just have hips like God. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. There's girls born like that. Then you have the girls like me. I was born flat chested. You understand? I, I never had a butt. And it's like, whatever. I don't care. Like, I'm told I like myself. I love myself. But everybody doesn't have that same perspective. And yeah, I get but that. Pretty, like, but, yeah, I'm not, that. but I'm not. But I'm. Mm-hmm. Listen, I'm not going to knock anybody Stop for it. getting it. I'm just saying that I wish. I wake that, up like this. I wish. Really, <laughs> <come on. laughs> because I, I had. Pose, and right? I had a baby and then I got like even a, a different body. So it's like, you don't even wait for yourself to have a baby anymore. You you don't, don't even try to no, work don't, out. Don't, you don't even try don't to don't work try. out that's to get the body. That's my yeah, thing. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, oh, I'm a 
I'll buy it. And then it's like you save up all this money. You don't even have a crib. You don't even have a car. Your credit is not good. But you're out here buying a body. So is that self-love? Is that common sense? I, I, no, listen. And I agree with you for a long time. But then, like I said, I sat there and I'm like, yo, you never really know what somebody's going through, right? And if somebody wants to fix their, fix their nose where it's a little sharper to look more of like Italian, you know what I'm saying? And it makes them feel prettier. Why not do it? Because that's self love too. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's self love in a way. Because you, it's you're not self love s- if you're making yourself look like somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. else. No, it's that's not. Love. That's, 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 that's not self love. That's an insecurity. Right. That's self love. Self love is self love. It comes from inside. It doesn't come from outside. Can I yes. call you? Self hate. No, that's the way y'all. I got you. No, because I agree with that for the whole. I agree with y'all for a long time. But then, like I said, I understand. I talk to a lot of females and. All the time, they like they always want some type of enhancement. Like this other girl I was talking to, she was like, "I wish my butt could just be a little higher." But it's why? people always want something. Like we, we sit at the table. We everybody always wants listen, something a little I more. I want my, I want my. Listen, I had a baby and I breastfeed till this day. I want my boobs to be higher. I want my ass to be fatter. And that's, that's, you understand? Know what so what's, what's but at the end of the day, I'm not gonna go pay for that because God didn't want me that way. All right, and, and if that's somebody me that personally, does, and that's, but that's because uh-huh. I love myself. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't need to go under the knife. Trust I'm playing me, devil's addict. Trust, advocate, trust by the me, way. no, you have to though, oh, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I and I respect and I love right. you for that because at the end of the day, this is how this is what we need because the audience is gonna look at it. It's people gonna look at it from the outside like, why is she talking to them like that? I got this done, and I have friends that did it to themselves, and it's not to knock y'all or to judge y'all, right. but honestly, I just wouldn't do it, and I want to know when is self love gonna come back because you said it was self love, but that's an insecurity, like he said, mm-hmm. because in order for you to change something about yourself that you were born with that that has nothing to do with your personality, has nothing to do with personal growth. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? It's literally just you changing yourself to change how you look, but then one day you're going to have to go get that touched up. You have to get it. If it was if it was self love, you wouldn't have to touch it up every three years. Right. You mm-hmm. wouldn't have to keep going back fact. every five years or whatever the case may be. You wouldn't have to sit there and when you get older, how how the hell is that going to look? Yeah, you're going to look like a wrinkled ant. And then you're going to be sitting there like, damn, I should have left my body alone. When all the complications start kicking in yeah. from them things that could bust inside your body, yeah. people want to breastfeed. They can't even breastfeed no more because they got silicone in their titties. People want to sit there and move their butt. Their butts is blowing up. Girls are going to any type of low ball place because they want to save money. Ailments in their hips. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. it, then it, could, it could cause so many different problems with you just because you want to pay money rather than working your body out. Because if you work your body out a certain way, you can get the body that you really want. Absolutely. If you mm-hmm. eat right, if you That's diet right. Because right, some people are doing it for gains and some people are doing it to lose. If you do the right, if you do the work and put in that time, your body will be how you want it to be. So yeah. is that so? So now, that if you love yourself enough, mm-hmm. wouldn't you, you work actually, hard for it? My thing is this too. Thank you. When you truly love yourself, mm-hmm. you love all your all your imperfections. Absolutely. I mean, you love the good and the bad about yourself. Right, you understand right. what I'm saying? Like that's my thing. That's how I feel about it. You know. So, but you also when, like the good things. Overpowered it, the little thing, you know, it's like okay, I don't like my my nose or whatever. It's a little crooked. It's like yeah, but I'm, I got a dope ass personality. You understand what I'm saying? I like, don't like love, my wheelchair. Like, I'm not gonna sit there and drag my ass on the ground just so I don't have to be exactly. in a wheelchair. You understand right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I don't. I have a mustache. I have to shave it literally probably once or twice a week. You understand? So I can my see it. eyebrows. I see it right my here. eyebrows. Yeah, yes, yeah. that's what I'm saying. My eyebrows get really really thick. <laughs> I get really hairy. <laughs> that so it's like, know, right, right, it's, that like it's, it's nobody that's really a hundred percent perfect, and it's okay. That's what I'm saying okay. to just be you and just to love yourself how yeah. you were born and you know? like I said I'm playing devil advocate because like I said there's females out there they they work out 10 times 3 times a week right and they still don't get the results to how they would like to see it because they're watching social media and they're seeing different like Bernice right Bernice is like 50 years old bad she got her body done alright but then that makes her, her that's part of self love because I'm guaranteed if you ask her right now that's probably one of the best positions um, best situations and best um, situations she did for a long Jessie time just that, like that, girls that has, with big butts but is that, is that, is that, <laughs> because that's got her a bag this, bro Bernice right, is right. who she is see, because she did all that all right, thing, but, yeah, but, you know yeah, yeah but let's get down to the core right mm-hmm. okay. was that decision made out of self love or for gain Mm. I think it's both because let me tell you why and let me explain okay. why right mm. if shorty didn't do those little minor or major work on her body right she's not the person who she is today right she's not attracting the all body. these type no she's not attracting first of all it's not even so easy. she's not herself no she, no she's she not the no person self, who she self, is self she has is, no personality but self love is in the title no it's love of self you so, understand what i'm saying so you can't do all those enhancements and not love yourself which you, you no you, you love the person that you became 
Mm-hmm. And that's after the no, fact. That's not self love. Love of yourself is mm-hmm. loving who you are at that at, from the beginning. Who you're right. called to be. Right. It doesn't matter if you love who you are. If it's girls that love who they are and then they want to get those enhancements, and I respect those. The ones and that's, that's doing what I'm, it, well, that's they're doing it for them. About. But there's a lot of girls that's doing it just because they want to look like Kylie Jenner. They want to look like Kim Kardashian. They want to mm-hmm. look like Bernice Burgos. And yeah. they don't want to look like themselves. Is something wrong with that though? But that, but that's immediate. That's like, no. Well, because they, they, yeah, if you want to look like someone else, of course it's someone. But here's the thing. That's love of trending. Social media, right? When you see those pictures of these stars, right? What you're not seeing is what she had to go through to save up, buy it, go for the flight, do the, the research, healing process. Heal, right. You see the uh, five months later when everything done tightened up and she sends a picture. Mm-hmm. Now that's immediate gratification right there. So people want that. You see 40,000 people, all the heart's eyes and the drooling mm-hmm. mouths emojis, okay? People want to feel people to feel that way. People want to feel good, but and that's why. But then that damages that damages young girls too, because yeah, the young girls fact. that's coming up are like, well, it's damn, because these did. are the, these are the same girl promoting fitness. They promote the waist <laughs> trainers. They promote like they have to, they had to do all that work. Yeah. They had to pay. They paid for it, and then people are sending them this stuff because they're famous and they want to get pulled. So girls are thinking like, damn, these are the girls that's in the gym trying to work out, trying to get that body, and they can't understand why they can't get it if their favorite celebrity has it, but they don't realize their favorite celebrity paid for that body. Right. They not even giving they're not even giving their bodies a chance nowadays because they're like 22, 23 star now and mm-hmm. they like like Frenchie said when you have a baby your body turns they're not even like I feel like you when, when you're around 27 or something like that that's when maybe like 26, 27 that's when your body is what it is pretty much right mm-hmm. I feel like they're 22, 23 and they're going to get their body done without even giving themselves a chance. They don't, they not, not even hitting the gym. They're not develop, fully developed, right? They're not hitting the gym, anything. And, and y'all saying it all are on a perspective, because I, I don't know if everybody could agree with it here. Everybody pretty much loves themselves here. Everybody yes. has very yeah. much, oh, a lot sure. of self love, self confidence, right? Now, which is what we promote. And, heavy, and that's, you know, heavy. we promote that heavy. heavy. But uh, the young 18 year old girl, right, that's on social media and see a Bernice or see a Kylie, right? Mm-hmm. They're looking in the mirror every day, and they're like, damn, they're getting us all this attention from all these boys, right? And if I can somehow make my nose a little more sharp or a little more pointed or have a little more butt and get the same attention and make me feel a little better, mm. is there something wrong with that? So that's feel not, but that's what? not, but again, that's, that's what I'm about saying. About giving the attention because she, the, the attention, they do, not yourself. You feel better about mm-hmm. the attention exactly. and the attraction, not you. Not you. You are still you. <laughs> you don't think nothing changed. You don't believe inside. that eighteen year old that that's going to eventually do that procedure is going to feel better for himself because no, of the it's going to create a monster. It's a, it's a lie. Exactly. It's a They're going to want to change every mm-hmm. little thing it's that they illusion. don't like about themselves. It starts to become yeah. a problem. There's a lot of situations where kids commit suicide because they don't have this type of look either. Mm-hmm. But, but so the, that's what I'm saying. You got to look at the other side. That, but that stems from uh-huh. something else, though. That's right. external. That's that's society and peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's them saying, "Hey, listen, you, because you don't look like this, uh, watch my language up." Uh, but you're not it. Mm-hmm. Okay, you you have no value, mm-hmm. and, and and that's where the, the parents' job, okay, to instill right, value still and self worth exactly. in their children. So it did, did, there's, there's in a, a perfect lot of tra- world it doesn't work like but that. But that's cool. But that's but that's and it happens. In my world it works like that's that. right. But that's it what happens you te- again. Back to what you but teach what, your kids: self love, self respect. Yeah. White people started off with the plastic surgery and stuff like that. That's when we seen it. When I was younger, I grew up. I seen a lot of white women. They got the big, big boobs and then the nose jobs and stuff. Then I started seeing black women do it. But it's like, wow, we're supposed to teach each other to love ourselves. So how are you telling me to love myself, but you're going out fixing your nose, your black nose, mm-hmm. your black lips? You understand? What I'm saying the things that people are paying to get, the features that we have that people pay to get. You're going around changing that because of what that mm. can't be self-love right, that's right, not right, self-love right. self-love if you have to change it then it can't be that because okay. self-love is loving who you are on the inside forget how i look in the mirror when i wake up i still know who i am when i was laying in the hospital for 90 days i didn't sit there and think about damn i wonder how i look mm. i'm thinking about like well how is my life gonna be when i go outside you understand what i'm saying oh, it's yeah. not about it's not about how people gonna look at me no more it's how i'm gonna look at myself right, right. if i look at myself and i feel like i gotta make a change about every little thing do i love myself no no, no. Amen. That's, That's it. That's I mean, what it boils and, down to. And then we got to remember point. that um, not to take away from any other culture, race, all right? We're not mm-hmm. creating separatism here, but we are talking about black love, and that's what we are, so there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you guys recall, I, I forgot her name, but there was an African woman, and, she, and because she had such a, a big behind, right, mm-hmm. a, a body that no one's ever seen before. She was uh, a slave. Europeans, they had her right No, in she was in a zoo. Museum, um, um, like I forgot her name. Um, yeah. It was Sarah, a show. No, S- 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 Sarah something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah something, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, so I, I, we we are naturally astounding. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying we, we, we've been there, especially our women. They're naturally that By way. Nature, yeah. uh, and, and sometimes you don't have to be exactly like her to mm-hmm. be great. You know, it, like there are women that 
are comfortable with small bodies and, and they're so, I like my little they're so confident. Jumps. Yeah, they're so yeah. confident that they still she can still we're not promoting cheating, but she if she wants she can still grab the attention of a man that has the woman that looks like Bernice Burke um, Burke, right. whatever her That's name right. is. All right, and so it's all about the energy you bring. Uh, I, I'm gonna tell you now uh, the work that I put into myself from one place I was at when I was low, had a low self esteem, mm -hmm. and my value was uh, and my purpose was uh, a relationship. Mm -hmm. It was external. So without that, my sense of purpose and value would disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's very crucial that you have that in you. Okay. You know, and, and that's a that's lot right. if you date someone and then you gain an injury like how we have a permanent injury right mm -hmm. say we was dating someone and all they cared about was appearance we wouldn't make it far with them because now our whole appearance have changed well, our legs get skinnier I, I get you our, our body changes number one mm -hmm. as soon as you get in a wheelchair your body yeah, changes you have yeah, muscle yeah, dysmorphia yeah, and yeah, everything yeah. so what if they was attracted to your muscles and then you just lost all your muscles you lost all your muscle mm -hmm. mass you lost all your body weight and then it's like well damn you're nothing but skin and bones now and it's like this is all that they were attracted to when you're in the hospital you're not gonna be looking your best like mm -hmm. I said my eyebrows grew out like Wolverine mm -hmm. I, my mustache nah, I wasn't we all paying attention the, to we, it we all looked at bad I wasn't yeah, paying yeah, attention to it I didn't care so what if the person I was dealing with at that time came in like oh I can't do this anymore imagine what that would have did to myself if I didn't tell you if something. I didn't love me I'm gonna me. tell you something Frenchie 95% uh, of the time that happens the person that get injured in with a spinal cord injury or whatever happens the, the significant other leaves them because nice. they're not they can't adjust to the new you it's not 95. It's, it's a high this, percentage. This, this, it's, it's not 95. It's less than that. It's probably less. It's, it's, it's a people, very high percentage. I'm it's just a lot meaning, of people that, that number, got but. married to the people that they were with before that. Because some people can accept but Jardy, it. I'm, I'm going to keep it a buck. All right. I'm not cocky, but like, even like after my injury, right after my injury, like none of the women switched up. You yeah, 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 yeah. But um, was women. you in a relationship you when you first got injured? A relationship? No. Uh -huh. uh, because I was only 19, so. Mm -hmm. All my hoes came back. You shouldn't be able to get back. My so thing I, is, I can't think about yo, it. My thing is, like, uh, the confidence. Like, if you have enough self love for yourself mm -hmm. and the yeah. confidence, and not arrogance, I mean confidence. Yeah. Like, you attract. A, a certain you, know, a certain you attract type. a lot of people. Yeah, and, and, and it, people feel your energy is felt. Right, it exudes right. on the outside. When yeah. you're confident, you know, people people see they they the energy. It's like oh, it's yeah. magnetic. They, it's yeah, it's mag it's, an, it's an energy thing. Yeah. Right. So imagine so, you, you know, laying in that bed like, oh, I feel so ugly. You're, it's gonna start to yeah, it's people gonna see, radiate it, off of you. That's a fact, and, and they're gonna feel that like insecurity. Eye, yeah, your head, that yeah, yep. your head is down when yep. you talk. You know, you you're can't want to say you can't don't have direct eye eye contact. You're tugging at your clothes. You know, you see people when they're doing this all the time when they don't feel when they you know you 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 see the little things right. People came into my room. I sat up there like, what's the what's the dude name from X Men? Uh, Xavier, oh, Professor X. but Professor I was sitting there like Professor X. They rolled in tomorrow. I'm just sitting there like this. You come into my house now. This is me. <laughs> You're gonna love me. Or you're gonna leave me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. Scary. That was intimidating. You scared me just. <laughs> 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 I'm like, yo, what's guy? What? You, you gave me flashbacks. You better do this shit. You <laughs> crack this bottle. <laughs> oh, you want to crack the courage? You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we have a guest here, and this, yes. is, this yeah, is for, yeah, for pretty the King amazing, Pretty Sean, amazing guy, uh, Amazing man. dude. Um, his name is Donahue, and I actually first met Donahue, um, I don't know if you remember this. I'm going about to bring you way back. I remember. You probably don't remember this. I met you in a club. It was a club <laughs> yeah, slate, yeah, right? Yeah. And you was with a woman. <laughs> met my son in a club? Club That's slate. That's what's up. And he was with a woman, right? And he was having his own time. And I'm like, I'm seeing this dude. I'm like, yo, that's like, that's shit I like. I'll be talking to the, the woman and shit like that. I don't know who the woman was. I think it was his she know that. at the time. <laughs> so he came up to me. He's like, yo, bro. I'm like, you know, I, I think he came up to you because, you know, game respect game. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I love to see other people with disabilities out there and enjoy. I, that shit puts a smile on my face because I'm like, yo, I'm not the only one. Like, everybody's enjoying themselves, having fun. I seen him. And he's like, yo, bro. And mind you, I was really... I was fresh in my injury. I was like yeah. two years in. And he's like, yo, bro, you could still do this. Like, you could, you got wow. mad life. And he came up to me. That's you see what I'm saying? Crazy. And he's That's like, wrong. yo, bro, you could still do this. You see what I'm saying? And he's with his his joint at the time. They having fun party. And he's like, yo, bro, you still got life, man. You got you could enjoy this. You could still could you could still do this. And I'm like, mind you, this is two years in. And I'm mm. like, yo, you right. He said we continue to enjoy having fun. But that was like really big and it showed his character right there. Because right, like right. 
It took a. I'm like, yo, it was good to see that's that. That's the PG version. Yeah, that's a PG <laughs> version. Just, yeah. I sick the wolves on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just, to, <laughs> just to show you love, like you know, to come hey, out and show you love, that was dope. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 clean, it didn't take, it didn't take, yeah. it didn't take anything from him from to do to, that to show and that's you love. Big. Yeah, and that's you know big. I mean? Yeah, a lot of yeah. people. Don't and um, bro, sitting there clean, man. I'm like, oh, hold up. No, I wear all white like a Dominican. I stay wearing white. Love some white jeans, me. But um, <laughs> I see, I seen the enjoyment, and he was really yeah. having fun. I'm like, yo, I, I, it just put a smile on my face because I was newly injured. And I'm like, yo, yes, like somebody, you know, having fun and enjoying Thanks. himself. Thanks. So, um, let's let's get let's get into the meat of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Um, King, tell the people about yourself. Um, what kind yeah. of disability you 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 know you you okay. acquired and um. Yeah. Your, your journey. So, but first, right. let's tell the people about a little bit about what, what, what you do. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I know, I know how to break it down quickly, right? So, nah, um, take your time, man. Okay. Take your time. All right, yeah, because I'm here. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, this was February 10th, I think, 2002, 2003. Yeah, um, you know, it's old. been a while, so it gets, yeah, it gets, huh? You old. She called you a senior citizen. Said 2002. Oh, my, oh man. <laughs> but, like, uh -huh. um, I, I was coming out of the store, man, mm -hmm. and, uh, I was in a rush to get home because my I forgot to walk my dog. Mm -hmm. Right, I went to go see this chick. Got Stupid caught dog. Up. Yeah, you know, so I felt bad. So I went in the store to buy some Slim Jims because he loves Slim Jims. Mm -hmm. So that was my way of saying sorry when I get back. You know, yeah. when I walk in on time. Right. And I come out of the store now. It's like two two something in the morning. So it's dead. It's quiet. Yeah. You know, um, out of nowhere, as soon as I come out of the store, there's like a hundred people. Bro, I'm like, oh my god. What was going on, bro? Yeah. So I, I stood in, 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 in by the store on the corner, and then um, a fight broke out right by the store. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't see that one of the guys, or it was, it was more than one, but one of them ended up getting his gun out because mm -hmm. well, he was getting jumped. And he ended up, and, and the group that was on him ran towards me. In mm -hmm. my mind, I'm thinking, all right, I'm next because they're coming for me. I don't know, dude. Pull his, you know what I'm saying, right. pulls out the mm -hmm. strap. So I'm like, all right. So I drop my bag. I back up to the wall. Like, all right, I'm about to get it, but fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw one. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kept running. Mm. So I'm like, and right when I look, it just, bah, 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 bah. It didn't register what was happening yet mm -hmm. until I look. I see flashes. Now I'm at, I'm in a safe place. I'm safe, but the panic. Because everybody else ran, I ran too. Oh, Cause you know, you know how y'all know how. Yeah, it's black people. Run. Yeah, one once one person start running at everybody. <laughs> you know, when shots fired, like the they, they don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying they don't care who they hit. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm out of there. You know what I'm saying so I, I ran and I thought I tripped, mm. but when when I tried to get back up to keep running, my legs wouldn't move. Mm. And I thought it was fear. I thought it was fear. Like I was like, you know what? Just don't be afraid. Get up. Get up. You know, stop being a pussy. Get up. You know, and they just would not move. Mm. Um, I seen dude creeping up, and I'm just like, damn, it's about to be over for me, you know? Mm. Like, there's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I'm hearing is click, 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 that's it, just nothing, click, click. And I'm just like, he just took off. And I, in my head, I'm like, man, I'm only like 19. I didn't do anything with my life. I was just, uh, I just finished paramilitary training. Mm -hmm. It was a program that they had where uh, when you were too young to enlist, you can basically learn how to do basic training, mm -hmm. things like that. I went from, uh, excuse my language, but this is what they called me. I was I was a shitbird mm -hmm. of the yeah, platoon yeah. Mm -hmm. to four squad leader to platoon leader. Uh, Got me? Yeah, I was able to run 10 miles off road. Right. Got yeah. me? I was great. So I, I think that, to be honest, saved my life, my mm -hmm. conditioning at that time because I got hit with a 45 caliber bullet. Mm -hmm. You understand? And being, well, I was 6'5", about like 190, I mean, yeah, he I was, was a big dude. Well, a big yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nick is still a big dude. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and like, um, this life changed at that moment. I never, never felt so much pain in my life, the confusion. And, mm -hmm. um, it was like I was born again, but I, I, ha I have a conscience now. Mm -hmm. You're you aware. Know, I'm aware of life, right? Yeah. So I'm a newborn baby, but I know everything already. Right. And it, it's hard, you know, because mm -hmm. everything you know, it's different. In, in, a, in a split second, mm -hmm. life is different for you. Mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah. I don't, the, the, you know, the yeah. video can't really catch it, but you're also an amputee. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you catch these nubs, they're sexy nubs. <laughs> sexy nubs. <laughs> yeah, they sexy. That's, okay, that's, sexy man. that's blood, self love, self love, self love, baby. Self love, you hear me? Right. How did um, that happen? I got you. Okay. So um, I would say about four or five years after my injury, mm -hmm. my circulation started getting bad. Mm -hmm. And I ended up getting something called edema where the water doesn't circulate properly in your body. 
So the water would just pool down and they would just swell up. Mm. My legs and feet would just swell up. And when I would use um, ace bandages, compression bandages to kind of mm. keep the swelling down, they started to cut into my leg. And that went from stage one wounds to stage four over time. And they were like, dude, just cut them off or die. And I'm like, Pace, you feel yeah, me? Because yeah. Yeah, you can't just plant a seed to grow legs back. You yeah. feel me? So I'm like, you know, once I make that decision, it's over. Was yeah. it a hard? I mean, I, I can't. It wasn't a hard. Yeah. Once I got to the point where I thought about it, like, you know what? Just make the decision and do it. And do it, yeah. Just do it. And I was so happy that I wish I had did it the year before when it, when it actually started. Because you would have started living earlier. Bro, the second I got out of the the, the 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 bed, like like two weeks after my surgery, I got out of bed to get in my chair. I didn't have to lift my legs up. Yo, okay. That's a good point. I got in the car. <laughs> I didn't have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I hear a lot of amputees say that they right. say like the best decision was cutting off the, the bottom part because it's easier to move me. around. Yeah, they weren't yeah. doing shit for me. Yeah, I'll be honest. They mm. were not doing anything for me, okay. but having me look complete when I with an outfit. And that's the mm. that's the hard part about it cuz so many people like even us in chairs like with our legs, you know, mm. we be like, "Oh, our legs, we don't have our legs or whatever." And then you don't realize it's people that really don't, don't have don't their realize. legs. Yeah. Mm. And it's like I still don't I think that would be like the hardest decision for me, you understand, just to like if I was placed with that question like to make that decision, it's like, "Damn, I know I'm going to choose life over it because at the end of the day it's more you important do do. than legs, but I'm still it still will be a time where I freeze like, "Damn, I'm really about to lose these things." Even yeah. No, they didn't work in a while. It was yeah. a point where I wasn't even washing my legs because they didn't work. Seriously, mentally, yeah. it, I was so messed up. I was right. so mad. I was mad at my legs. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I was mad at my legs Fast. for not working. So the fact that you just said like it was so easy for you and then oh, after that, life, a lot of people don't speak on that because so many people just talk about the pain from it. But it's like you gained a new way just from mm. cutting it off and being mm. able because it is a lot to sit there. Every time I get on the bed, I got to lift my leg or do yeah. this or do that. And it's heavy. Heavy. It's like dead weight. Yeah. Oh my God. And then and putting shoes on and um, <laughs> putting shoes on. Man, no, let's. What? He said, I don't miss that shit. I was stubborn in the beginning. I was still stubborn, so I was still trying to put Thames on. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God, that was the worst. <laughs> Toes are just like crippled Yo. in there, man. It's done, you know. But um, so like a year after my injury, mm -hmm. uh, my my dog. I was walking my dog at night. The same dog mm -hmm. uh, was shot and killed in front of me. Oh, yeah, so I, I got him tatted here, but like. Mm -hmm. That kind of, that was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Mm, yeah. You know, life was already tough. I'm still trying to figure things out. I don't know what, because, you know, at this time, there was really no programs like that to help people with disabilities, spinal cord injuries, you know. Mm. There, was, there was, especially not in the city. Uh, and uh, I was like, you know, if this is where life is going to take me, like, this is, this is where the rest of the story is going to go, mm. I'm closing the book. Mm. I'm, 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 I'm out of here, bro. I don't want to finish this book. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, I try to take myself out. I, I won't lie. I try to commit suicide. Uh, took a whole bottle of um, um, hydromorphone, mm. okay, dilaudids, and next you know I woke up in the hospital with a tube down my throat. Mm. Uh, and then I ended up meeting a woman, uh, a crazy woman, okay, <laughs> and I thought I found purpose. Mm. Mm -hmm. But uh, that purpose, it was purpose uh, because people, someone needed me. They needed my affection. They desired me, mm. which made me feel like, okay, make you feel I'm still needed. I'm yeah. still a part of this thing called life. Right. Mm. You know? Um, but when things would get shaky or we have our little breaks up, breakups, or I was unhappy to the point where I wanted to move on, I was too afraid to move on or even stop certain things because I knew that without her, that extension, I lost purpose. Mm. Mm. Now I'm lost again. Um, so it took some time to the point where God kept calling me. Um, I didn't know where he was going to take me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was afraid of because I didn't trust him. Mm. So then I started listening. I started hearing me, this other me saying, listen, we can do this. We can make this happen. And I'm like, make what happen? Yeah. What are you talking about, bro? Because where, where I need to go, it required a lot of internal change. I had to change the way I thought. The way I, I, I thought about myself, what I accepted, mm -hmm. a lot of my bad habits. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of work facing my demons, Ooh. living in my truth, okay, mm -hmm. about my disability, how bad things got. Things didn't just happen to me because of my disability. The things that I allowed to happen because I was just so upset with being disabled, I just stopped caring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had to be honest, like, okay, these are the reason why you, reasons why you're dealing with this. Mm -hmm. Move on from that. Get over it go forward and that journey where I had to learn how to trust that greater me. But that greater me, I, I, I forgot 
because it's been so long, I forgot about our relationship that we did accomplish goals together. I went from shipbird to um, platoon leader. That's right. Got me. So it's in you. Right. Mm -hmm. I was able to lead a whole company. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I was like, all right, you know what? I can't accomplish things, but I didn't know if I had the sustainability to keep going or grow. Got it. Right, right, so right. that's where the fear came in. But I, that's where the trust and, and, and faith had to come in. All right. I'm taking you to the unknown, but just know I'm not taking you somewhere that's not safe or you can't handle. Mm. Mm. And that's why I started doing the work. I came back to the city, but that required me to leave my, my marriage, my relationship. Mm. That was the sacrifice. Mm. So it wasn't just a concert for me. She thought it was just a concert. <laughs> but it was right. You know what I'm saying? But that was right. doing, she don't need to know that. Yeah, yeah, you got me? Yeah. She now may you know. know now. Yeah, now you know. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and I leave you for the concert. And, huh? and, and, and let's he talk about the achievements. <laughs> like you you are very you 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 are very uh you're a pillar in the community. Let's yes. talk about some of the achievements as far as and, and as far as like the adaptive boxing program that you brought Ooh, into the city. Okay, yeah. Um before we wrap this up. Mm, okay, yeah. so yeah, so um I received recently uh, the second annual Nipsey Hustle Award for my community work. That's the piece, Nip. Yes, sir. Nipsey Blue. That's right. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and a citation from the uh, Assembly, New York Assembly. Mm -hmm. And um, now I'm to the point where uh, I am the, how should I say, uh, senior advisor for the Montefiore uh, Adaptive Sports Program in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a peer mentor for Mount Sinai and ICS Let's peer go. mentor program. Let's go. We'll talk okay. about it. I and adaptive boxing. Tell yeah, them because that's boxing. your passion. Bro. Oh yeah, so the, uh, I I do adaptive boxing. So mm -hmm. what I do with that right now, but due to COVID, it's a lot of it's virtual. But uh, pre uh, pre COVID, um, I had I have a camp where there's 13 members mm -hmm. now. It splits up now. Beforehand, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to the juicy part, right? Uh, in the beginning, when we started the adaptive boxing training, uh, Jess was my first fight. <laughs> you know what I'm saying he busted beat my he busted beat my beat lip. Beat nah, nah he busted my lip. You know what I'm saying <laughs> I, 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 I didn't appreciate I didn't appreciate one. that. You know what I'm saying so I had to go back on my Rocky shit. You know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. I, listen, I who was like Apollo? Who was Apollo for like two Rocky. months straight? I was training my ass off. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I was like, Yo, coming back next fight. You know what I'm saying I got my revenge. It was a great fight. I let us God. You feel me? But yeah. um, the goal um, for what we're doing is what I do with adaptive boxing is to uh, not only build self-esteem with people with disabilities, mm -hmm. uh, learn how to defend themselves, to be comfortable going out into the world. Because that's, that's, right. a, that's an issue a lot of people don't talk about in the disabled community is people are fearful of confrontation and going out into the world because they feel that um, if I go past a certain point, I'm not able to protect myself, my family, and I'm afraid of things coming my way, mm -hmm. you know? And um, if I can just give you just enough courage to go out there and speak up for yourself, or even in your own home and your family, the people are being abused and neglected and taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. If that gives you enough confidence to say, no, I'm not accepting this anymore. Uh, this is where how it's gonna go from now on. Facts, you know? <laughs> even if you don't have to put hands, you could just speak up. Just have the confidence to speak, speak up and up. say, no, right. I'm not accepting it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and to go out, like this one uh, couple, a relationship with a guy, he got disabled and uh, they stopped going out and, and it started testing their marriage. And actually, your wife reached out to me, mm. Mm. you know, and said, this is what we have going on. And uh, uh, working with this brother to get him out of the household, mm. uh, stop sitting in front of the building. Just go live life. You have a mm. woman that's committed to you. She was there from pre-injury. Pre wow. That's rare to have someone still with you and that committed, yeah, that's real, right? you know, because yeah. she got options, that's you right. know, yeah. and... Um, I had to be honest with him and remind him of that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, dude, see you now. And trust me, they're going to even try even more because they feel you're incapable of keeping that woman. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then mm -hmm. even mad, especially if you got a, a bad one. They see you in a wheelchair with a bad one. Yeah, they're like, how? how? It's yeah. impossible, you know, yeah. and, and they want to destroy that. So you have a lot of uh, things at, at, at that tr trying to keep you from going forward and progressing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. that's a part of why I do And also it helps people yeah. what you're doing because... Yeah. When I first met you, you yeah. you've been very active. You've always yeah. been yourself, you know. Right. And who he's showing right now is who he is. Very outgoing, yeah, he's very lively. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's a really positive person, you mm -hmm. know. And I first met you seven years ago. I was about what? Damn, how old am I now? A I was about baby. seventeen, I'm like seventeen, baby. eighteen when I met him. And he was he's been doing the boxing. Mm -hmm. So I used to try to call myself going up there hitting the little I don't know what you call those things the pads. and I was yeah the yeah. pads and Focus I was doing it with soon. you I was doing it with Jose mm -hmm. and it, it helps you know because you're relieving some anger that you don't even know you have pent up inside of you yeah. from, from what, whatever you're going through whether you're able-bodied or not disabled you know it makes you feel some type of it makes you feel good yeah. I don't right. know hitting something that's not a person you know it's like okay well boom 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 like I'm not hurting anybody I'm just relieving steam and relieving yeah. stress and that's a really 
good thing to do. So being that you're doing it for us, because we don't have many outlets to go to being disabled, mm -hmm. it's like it shows like, you know, we still can have a life outside yeah. of just yeah. sitting there right. Right. waiting for our home health days to do things, right. waiting for people to come get us and make us do things. We can go Depending do things on how ourselves. She, how good she looks. <laughs> I, I, I take home health age down. I, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo, yeah, yeah, man. So, so you know, um, I know Donnie does a, a lot of things for our community, yeah. and it's it's an honor for having you as our Thank first you. first guest. Thank you. I yeah, wish we could man, expand on more yeah, and talk man. about more because it's so the, many the things. Goal is the you Paralympics. Do. I'm telling you, we, we're there. We're coming soon. We even uh -huh. got a network. You know, mm. we got a network internationally to air all of our competitions around the world. That's right. mm, okay. Um, Beat yeah. all of them. Absolutely. Beat yeah, all of that. Of Bring home even, if, even if I don't fight them, I, my guys will. My, I got to go. I train monsters. You hear me? Gold, man. Right. Yes. So um, we always like to close off our podcast with something that we all thankful for, right? Because mm. um, I think, like I said, in this life, you know, we we, we uh, a lot of things we keep we take things for granted, right? So you know, we close off our podcast always explaining on something that you know, pretty much telling our family what we thankful for, and um, let's close it off on. What do you what are you thankful for currently in your life? Right. I'm, I'm gonna be straight straightforward, honest. Uh, my sanity, because mm -hmm. uh, I damn near lost it a few times being disabled, and um, keeping that. Uh, I, I I don't think I'd have been a, a fit father. Um, I, I don't think I would be where I'm at now if I just lost touch of of who I am as a human being, as a man, as 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 a child of God, mm -hmm. a God in the flesh. I had to remind myself completely mm -hmm. every day that I am great. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the world is, uh, they have their perception and their idea of me, but I have to be insane enough to go against that and, and to prove them wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't easy, but you, I'm there. You That's here. Right. Yeah. What's up, Frenchie? What did you think before? I'm thankful for God because I found him when I got injured and Amen. he's brung a lot of peace back into my life because before I got in this injury I didn't have a lot of peace I just was existing like you said you found your consciousness I became a conscious person I became a very God-fearing person and when you're God-fearing life tends to go out a lot better for you I'm not judging anybody in their religion if this is not for you that's okay mm -hmm. this is just for me and I love God and I'm thankful Amen. He's pulled Amen. me out of the trenches. Big fan. What's good, big bro? What's your what you thankful for? I'm thankful for my perspective, my perspective on life. Um, I feel like everyone, you know, we're all human. We all have the, you know, no one is really like that special. I just feel like what just changes, what makes you different, separates you from everyone else is your perspective, the way you view things and your view on life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, yeah, I could, of course, I could just, I could just lay down and be like, oh no, I'm not. I give up. You get what I'm saying? But it's my perspective that made me like, no, nah, I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not laying down. I'm not just mm -hmm. giving up and just. No, I have too much life inside. You know, I got kids. It's just my it's your perspective. You know mm -hmm. that shift that I, you know, me make making that decision to shift and say, nah, I'm not giving up. You know, right. so I'm I'm gonna own this and yeah. So I'm thankful for my perspective on facts. life. Okay, yeah. big facts. And I'm yeah. thankful for a sound mind because at the end of the day, like we're in hard times and COVID mm -hmm. is rampant and a lot of people are just walking around and you don't know what people are going through during facts. these times, right? People lost their jobs, right? You know, especially little, I feel bad for the kids, like with the whole remote learning, like they're going through a hard time. So just um, a check on our mental, just check on people mentally. And, and our mental health is very important during these times because nice. you, like I said, this is, I was just watching the news and this couple just got killed by a dude just having an argument. Oh my but God, that was no, but if somebody probably even checked on the dude and see if he was, he had a mental check, see if he was okay. Because something little shouldn't trigger that guy for just killing people like that mm -hmm. and just killing the whole family. So, I'm just thankful for a sound mind, and that's very important because, like I said, you just never know uh, what somebody's going through mentally. Amen. And I'm um, just wrapping up. This is episode three. We did it. We made it. Thank you guys for our From guests. the Throne Podcast. From the Throne FTT, Podcast. FTT. You From already the know. And make sure you guys please like, share, subscribe. Merch coming soon. Merch I'm coming soon. That support. support your people. See support. Us. And then where can the people find you, Daniel? Uh, on Instagram, uh, Easy Does It, E A Z I I underscore D U Z I T. Facebook, my name, Donahue Fields. If you mm -hmm. want to know any more, just Google my name on uh, Google Donahue Fields and, and Adopt the Boxing. Adopt the, the Boxing. Mm -hmm. um, well, we're virtual now due to COVID. Uh -huh. uh, so there's no gyms that I could actually use uh, to run my program. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of things virtual. Uh, it's free. Okay. Um, I work with Montefiore, like I said, and I also have my own Zoom link that I work with my team, McMeets, mm -hmm. my okay. camp. So if you guys are interested, just reach out to me, find me, and I'll add you guys to the Zoom link. We put that work in. That's okay, and that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning in again. Later. Peace out, lives. Later.